Now, Jalen Brown, to your point, he mentioned in the press conference today, they would ask him about, you know, what did he work on if somebody get better? And he said that the main thing that he worked on was the mental aspect, getting over self, having a more mental toughness. And Celtics fans have been on my head top with them going up 3-0 in the DMs. I need to see the apologies. Y'all picked the Mavericks. Y'all picked the Mavericks. So I'll say, but on behalf of the bench mob ENT, I owe the Celtics an apology. I thought they were going to chuck up a bunch of threes, not drive it to the basket at all, not get mid-range at all. They've chucked up a bunch of threes. They haven't shot the best. But the surprising thing that I've seen this series, Drew Holiday, Derek Derek White, and Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown has done a great job of getting to the basket, making sure that he's getting mid-ranges. To your point, Jason Tatum, step back three when the Mavericks were coming back in game three. Step back three. The very next play, Jalen Brown gets a mid-range that takes the air out the gym. The Mavs, that run stops. Jalen Brown, what does this do for his legacy? A man that everybody was talking about. He shouldn't have got $300 million. Oh, he got overpaid. He's only 1B or number two. What does this do for his legacy? Eastern Conference Finals MVP and Finals MVP big series. Oh, this, I think, cements his legacy in you know Celtics lore, I think, because he's been the one to kind of pick up the slack in this playoff run. Like Tatum, he's the guy, quote unquote, but Jalen Brown's been the one who he's had those 40 point games when Tatum's off. He's had those games where he's putting the team on his back where other guys aren't stepping up to the plate. So, I mean, he hasn't really had a bad game in this finals. Like, what last game he finished with like 30, 8 and 8. And that was when he got off to a slow start, too. So, <laughs> again, it's, they're pitting these two guys against each other. Granted, they're two similar, very talented wing guards in this league that could definitely be number ones on any team that they go to. But I think this just shows, like, who cares about the who's one or who's two? Like, Jalen Brown is probably just as good as Jason Tatum in his own way. Like, their games are different. Like, Jalen Brown's able to drive to the paint. He's able to – he's a lot stronger. He's a lot more physical. And he – you know, you you look at him, He's he looks like a guy that should be physical, and he doesn't fall in love with the jump shot. Although I know Missoula, that's his philosophy, get up as many threes in each game, and hopefully we make them. But like Jalen Brown, even though he had nine threes in the last game, I think he made like a couple of them, he's still getting downhill, still getting to the mid-range, still trying to attack the defense. So – for his legacy, I mean, getting finals MVP and then Eastern Conference Finals MVP, this is basically his chip right here. Like, he's he's the guy. He's the reason that they made it this far. Tatum's the name on the, the face of the Celtics, but, like, they don't make it here if Jalen Brown doesn't do what he does. I think... I don't know. Now I'm drawing a blank. But, like, it's just fun to watch because, like, Jalen Brown, he came into the the league. Like, he didn't have a jump shot. He was a real strong, physical young guy. And the way he's built his game up to becoming a perennial all-star, to being an all-NBA level player, is not easy to do when you have somebody who – I mean, from 19 has been propped up as the next face of the league almost. You know, that's what the Celtics want him to be. That's what they want Jason Tatum to be. And Jalen Brown has kind of fallen to the wayside a little bit. And you hear people like Stephen A. Smith saying, like, he's not marketable and he's not someone you could sell. Like, I don't think it's true. I mean, sure, he's a different type of basketball player. He's He's a smart guy. But he can ball, too. 
like he's shown it and you got to give him credit where credit's due like this this kid he, he's worked every every year he's worked and built on his game like everybody made fun of him not being able to, being able to go left and that still might be an issue but who cares because like he's still able to make plays and you can't really stop him right now. So I don't even know if I answered the question, but. <laughs> hey. uh, he said something ironic in, the, in when he was talking about Jalen Brown. And uh, I, I'll say this, <laughs> we, we spoke about it this morning. I don't want to take the topic on a tangent, um, but I also can't help but think this way. It's, it's amazing to see how far Jalen Brown's come. Really good basketball player. I, I think that I've I've been saying for a while that he he looks better than Jay, than Jason Tatum, um, and we saw it in the final series in twenty twenty when they uh, lost to Golden State, and he uh, Jalen Brown had played great in that series, and Jason Tatum had clearly struggled, um, right? And, and it seemed like in the big moments they went to they went to Jalen Brown, and Jalen Brown continually answers the bell. He hit the big shot against the Pacers um, to send him packing in Game One that completely turned that series on its head. Uh, right when the Pacers could have made it a series instead of getting swept, um, and that was their best opportunity. And Jalen Brown was the one who made the shot, right? And that just seems to be the common, the common denominator, the common theme with the Celtics is that Jalen Brown's been the guy they go to because Jason Tatum does not answer the bell in big moments in in these big games, in these playoff games. He seems to do it in regular season. He has no problem in regular season, but it's definitely a thing where mentally the pressure is too much for him, and Jalen Brown answers the bell. So Jalen Brown. Credit to him. He's been he's had to live in J, uh, Jason Tatum's shadow for a long time, and he's getting the credit he deserves. But if you've been watching basketball for a while, um, you 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 realize that Jalen Brown has been more reliable than Jason Tatum in big moments, and this is nothing surprising, right? We're, we're, us being here in this moment in time, it was only, it, it it should have been some, it's a formality. We should have we were always headed here. It was always going to happen. Is the way I look at it, uh, you know. So does this mean he's a Hall of Famer? I mean. You know, I, I guess maybe we can we can have that conversation. I don't think I don't think one Finals MVP does that for you, but I think that he has a chance to get there, uh, Jalen uh, Jalen Brown. And, um, he's certainly the face of the Boston Celtics franchise. I, I think that J, Jason Kidd, while I do think he was playing mind games with the Celtics, uh, I do think he was being honest. I, I, you know, I think if you're scouting and game planning for the Celtics right now, you treat you treat Jason Tatum like he's the second option, and you treat uh, and, that, and that doesn't mean you don't respect him, but you really are really trying to take Jalen Brown out of the game because he's the guy that's going to hurt you and play well in the big game. Uh, so he's the face of the Boston Celtics franchise. That's the way I kind of look at it um, as well. And I think that Jalen Brown, Drew Holiday, Derek White all have greater, far greater uh, finals MVP cases than Jason Jalen uh, than Jason Tatum has. You know, I kind of that's just the way I view it, right? I think all three of those guys have a better uh, finals MVP case than uh, Jason Tatum. So that's the way I view it. 